If you've been following along with this series, you might have heard me say that everything in JavaScript is an object, but I haven't really explained myself on that one. And since we're uh, talking about all the built-in objects within JavaScript in this lesson, I really want to give an overview of this concept of primitives versus uh, the actual objects themselves. I'm gonna put some code on the screen that will hopefully give you a little bit of an introduction and some things to think about here. So when we run this code, um, you can see that we've defined two different strings and we have compared these strings with each other. So in the first case, we've got this weird syntax here where we're actually using this thing called a new, uh, it's actually the new operator we're gonna talk about in a second. And then we are defining our string with this uppercase string, which looks like some sort of object or something. And if you go to the JavaScript docs, so, or documentation, so let's go to JavaScript, built-in objects, and then you go down to string right here. That is the same syntax, the string, that we use to define this um, string right here. So string one is actually an object. Now string two is what we call a primitive. Now this is because we didn't you know, uh, instantiate it with the object syntax, and you can see if we compare the equality of these two, the triple equals, which compares both value and type, is going to return false because in the first case we're looking at an object, in the second case we're looking at a string primitive. And if we use the double equals, they're of course true because they are the same value, they're just not the same type. So at this point, you're probably, you probably probably have a lot of confusion in your head. Um, you're probably thinking a couple things. Well, you're telling me that string one is not actually a string, and the answer is yes, it's, it is not a string. It is actually an object. And then furthermore, you're saying that this string down here, so string two, that is a string, but how would we execute any of these built-in methods on something that's not an object? So there's a couple floating questions here, and to understand them, you have to know a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff that's going on with the JavaScript programming language. Let's start off by asking the question, what is a primitive? Now a primitive, this is not a topic that is specific to JavaScript. We talk about primitive data types across varying languages. So, you know, Python, Java, C++, they all have their uh, primitives. But in JavaScript, a primitive, uh, there are six different primitives that we can look at and we can go to the uh, documentation here um, for primitive and it will maybe show us all of the different um, primitives that we have. So maybe it doesn't actually. I thought that it did. But anyways, the six that we have are a string, a number, a big int, Boolean, undefined, and symbol. Some of these we haven't talked about, but that's totally fine. We don't need to talk about it yet. But what you can think about uh, when we're talking about primitives is that it is the simplest form of something. So if a coding language had a periodic table of elements, then the primitives would be those elements of the periodic table. So that's kind of how I would uh, think about it. And those primitives can actually be used to build up um, other things. Now, as you would expect, a primitive data type does not have any sort of methods or functions that you can call on them. So it doesn't make any sense if we were to come here in the console and let's define a string here. So we've got some string and now I'm gonna put a dot at the end of it just like I was calling a function or a method on an object. And if I were to take this some string and say to uppercase. So that is actually a built-in function on strings. So if you go down to um, the bottom here, you can see that to uppercase is a built-in um, method on the string object. But if we're saying that this is a string primitive, then it shouldn't be able to work, right? Well, wrong, it does work. And that is because behind the scenes, when we have a primitive value like this, where we define it with those little quotes or the double quotes even, it actually wraps it in that string object. So what we did up here, right here, this is actually happening behind the scenes when you call a specific built-in method on a primitive um, data type within JavaScript. Now this is kind of interesting and all, but what do you actually do with it? 
Well, the answer to that is not really anything. This is more of something that you should be aware of. It's just good to know type of information so that you're not wondering in your head, well, what is going on here? You know, we're talking about strings, but if we go to the documentation, it sure looks like this is some sort of object here. So it just clears that up for us. And if you go to the string built-in object and scroll down um, a little bit, we have this section called string primitives and string objects, which kind of explains the same thing that I just talked about. So feel free to read that and really dig in if you want to understand this a little bit better. So the takeaway here is that you should not be using this syntax up here with the string constructor. Um, this is not the way that you write strings. I taught you the correct way to write strings in the previous videos. This is just for clarification. Now, if you go to the actual documentation, you'll see in this section on string primitives and objects, um, down here it says, for these reasons, the code may break when it encounters string objects when it expects a primitive instead. So the documentation even recommends to not define them like this because JavaScript takes care of it for you. But anyways, that's just some information around here. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is that keyword that we looked at because this is also a little bit confusing. And as we go into the next couple sections of this lesson, it's gonna be important to understand. And that is this new keyword, which is actually considered an operator, although we didn't talk about it when we um, covered operators in a previous lesson. In the next section of this lesson, we're gonna be talking about JavaScript dates, which you actually have to use that new operator for to actually create. So if we wanted to create a date here, what we have to say is new, and then we pass in the date object with these parentheses at the end. And this is what we call constructing um, a instance of that date object. So you can kind of think of this um, in terms of, like you have this template that you're working with. So the date object would be the template, and then you're going to actually take a copy of that template and store it in a new variable um, that has all of those attributes of the template. It does everything that that template has kind of predefined it to do. Now, this is kind of an object-oriented programming uh, discussion. I don't want to get too far into it, but just know that this new operator is a special keyword in JavaScript, and that's what it's doing. So if you actually look into the new keyword, it's going to do a couple of things. So it creates a blank object, and then it links that blank object to the parent. So when I talk about template and an instance of that template, that's what I'm kind of referring to. So there are additional steps that get into the prototype chain. Again, I'm not gonna talk about um, that because it's another complexity that we don't need to visit right now. So with that, we're going to move on to JavaScript dates. <laughs>